Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the Nikkor 300mm PF f4 prime lens from Nikon. And we're going to be talking about what I like about it, what I dislike about it. You know the usual stuff you see in a review. Anyway, we're going to do that right over there. So I guess the first question I need to answer is why did I buy this lens? Well, what I really wanted was a small telephoto lens that would work well with my Nikon Z6 and allow me to get really cool photos of an animals and other wildlife without adding a whole lot of extra weight to my bag. Like, telephoto lenses are big and heavy. This one isn't. This is really good for si size-wise, even with the FTZ adapter attached. And for that, I love it. For what I don't love so much is a 300 millimeter focal length. For me, it's a bit restrictive and it doesn't really get me close enough to get pictures of wildlife. It's been good for some uh, landscape photography situations where I want to get, you know, a detail shot of a mountain or something. It's great for that and it's great for some wildlife shots where you where you can get physically close safely in f safely to the animal. But th that's a kind of a narrow uh, set of circumstances that I haven't run into very much. So. I'm afraid I haven't used this lens as much as I would have liked. So, over, in terms of how it's worked for me, it's been okay. Like, it's worked in some ways, but it's been a kind of a mixed bag because it doesn't really do everything I need it to do. And I think I might have been happier with a, a zoom lens, actually, or just maybe a longer focal length, which Nikon do make. They make a 500 millimeter version, and that would have, I think, worked better for me. We're gonna go talk about the lens itself now, build quality, stuff like that. So, in terms of build quality, this camera is a tank. It, it uh, feel, feels like it's built to last. It's definitely a professional lens. That's, re that's what's really nice about it. It's one of the most professional lenses I own, possibly the only pr real professional lens I own. And, you know, it's hard, hard, uh, really high quality textured plastic. Um, uh, of course, the interior, it's a metal, metal construction. Uh, great big lens element. You would not that that is of course goes with any lens a uh, point of weakness nice rubberized focus ring distance meter Focus, you know auto auto manual settings a focus limiter full and uh, infinity to three meters and uh, Of course your it's got in, in body stabilization Which can be turned for from sport to normal to off um, I've been reasonably impressed with the in-body stable with the in-lens stabilization, but um, it's not been such a big deal to me because you know all my lenses with the Z6 are stabilized because it's, it's got in-body stabilization, which is really nice. I do have to say I wish the camera had a hybrid was was able to work in concert with the lens, you know, to provide extra stabilization. But unfortunately, that's not a uh, technology. Nikon currently has, which is a bit of a bummer. Anyway, built like a tank, decent, de decent image stabilization. And I've got to say the autofocus is pretty good. Uh, it's, it could be better, but maybe that's just because I'm using it with the Z6, which doesn't exactly have the greatest autofocus. Again, okay autofocus, not amazing. In terms of image quality, this lens will not disappoint. It delivers absolutely fantastic photo quality. And I just love how sharp everything is, and I love the out-of-focus areas. You might experience some strange effects you might not like with those, with it, because it does use a Fresnel element to maintain extreme level of sharpness, and also shrink while shrinking the size of the lens down, as far as the Nikon have, and that's really impressive, and it performs really well. But it can create some strange effects. Uh, I haven't noticed them to be too uh, apparent myself. They haven't bothered me at all but it's just something to be aware of that you might, might bother you in your images. Uh, for me, the trade-off for size and image quality and overall image quality is just totally worth it. And it, in, in terms of image quality, fantastic. So in terms of cost, this lens is probably gonna set you back around $2,000. A bit, lot less if you buy it used like I did. But even then, it's still an expensive lens. And if you're just starting out, that can be a lot to swallow. And you're probably gonna be better off with something like uh, the uh, 
Sigma 150 to 600, like I reviewed a few years ago, and I just love that lens. It's great. Um, for the beginner, for even for a professional, that lens is going to be more versatile, more useful for wildlife photography and for a lot of other photography. However, it's not. They're not. It's not light. Those. Uh, a 150 to two, 600 or any zoom of that with that kind of range is going to be like that big. They are big and heavy and hard to carry around. They're cheaper than this, but they are big and heavy. So just keep that in mind. This is for what it is, for being such a small light, 300 millimeter with an f4 aperture. This is a pretty good. This is actually pretty good value. It's not. It's still expensive, but I say it's good value. And the images speak for themselves. In fact, I'm going to let them speak for themselves because then you're going to see a bunch of them right now. So before I bring my conclusion and sign off for the day, I wanted to share with you this really nifty lens hood my brother built for me since this thing didn't come with a lens hood because I bought it used. And he designed, 3D printed this himself, he even got all the little grooves so it would go snap on correctly to the lens. Works great, looks kind of cool in steampunk, I love it. And I really love this lens. It doesn't work quite very well for me and I haven't used it as much as I like to, but it's, it's just really a really good lens. Excellent image quality, super portable. Uh, it doesn't quite match my needs, and uh, maybe I'll move on from it eventually. But for now, it's pretty cool. And I can highly recommend it if you're in the market for a 300 millimeter prime lens. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you all again next time. Go check out some of the other reviews on my channel uh, if you're interested in the uh, 150 to 600 millimeter uh, Sigma review. That's over there, I'll have a link to it here. Um, probably already put, put it up in the video in a little bubble, but it'll be at the end too, and in the description probably. <laughs> and I'll probably do a written review of it as well, which is useful because I can put still, Im still images in that for you to look at. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate all my followers and everybody who supported me on my channel. And yeah, I'll see you all again next time. Bye.